Welcome back to my second video in which we investigate the problems with the oil filter failures in the BMW B58 engine. In my first video I examined the original equipment filter uh, and uh, dismantled one to see why it was that they were failing. Having identified what I thought was the most likely cause, I then bought an aftermarket filter by Marler. Uh, which is a recognised top quality brand and I thought it would be a worthwhile exercise to pull one apart and see how it's made and in particular if the Marler unit addresses the problems with the original equipment item that we can buy from BMW. Uh, now, having um, superficially looked at it already it's immediately apparent that there are one or two problems with this item which actually makes it appear at first sight to be worse than the original equipment filter from BMW. So I'm beginning to think, before I've even looked at this, that I'm not going to be recommending this uh, as an alternative. The first thing is, and again if I bring it up to the camera, hopefully the light is good enough to see, but the o-ring that is inserted uh, in the top here appears to be rucked up and again I don't know if it's obvious there um, but there's a instead of it being absolutely round all the way round it, it rucks up it rucks up there and slightly somewhere else and at the opposite end it does it does likewise um, not quite so bad at this end the only reason I can assume that it rucks up is because the o-ring is slightly too big for the recess into which it goes and consequently it, it needs to find the extra space and so it puts a bend in it. Well obviously an o-ring that rucks up is not going to be any good. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, I wanted to show it on, on camera first and again I'm not sure, I hope it's coming out. The, 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 the ruck in it is just, is just here. Um, what I wanted to do is use this dental probe to probe it out uh, and then reseat it and see if it will go in properly or whether the o-ring is genuinely too big or just not properly seated. Um, now the next thing that I discovered, um, which is really rather disheartening, is you'll recall from the last video I made I suggested that one of the things you could do to a filter prior to installation is just get hold of it and twist it and just see if there's any movement to make sure that the locking tabs, the keys as I refer to them, are located properly at both ends. Well I did that with this filter and it twists and it twists noticeably. So when I actually looked at it you can see that there's a relative movement between the filter base and the tube so it's not locked. The top is locked. So is this a failure of manufacture? or is this designed differently and it doesn't even have any locking keys at the bottom. If that is the case, not only have we got a rucked up o-ring, we've got a filter base which when you start to unscrew the filtered housing cap is immediately placing shear stresses onto the paper element. Now I have to say, it, although it's twisting, the paper element does feel quite sturdy and it's kind of hard to believe that it would disintegrate, but we know they do and in fairness, it doesn't really feel any more uh, fragile, uh, any more sturdy than the, than the um, element that came with the original equipment filter. I can only assume that, that that is to do with the fact that it's brand new, hasn't been soaked in oil. Maybe when it's been soaked in oil for a couple of years and 20,000 miles, you would get hold of it and it would be much more twistable. Initially, I was rather hopeful because the filter base and the filter top, instead of having uh, a, a groove um, cut all the way around uh, in a kind of a zigzag pattern that the filter fits into and then is glued in place, it would appear that these are manufactured differently and it appears that there is some kind of molten polymer poured onto the top and the filter is just pushed down onto it and it's embedded into it. Um, and again, on camera, I don't know whether that will be picked up, probably not. Um, but you can see maybe that uh, clearly there's a polymer that, that, that has been poured onto this and it's pushed into it. it uh, and that looked to me to be really good quality and I thought, well, that's going to be better than gluing it because if you glue it, there's always the possibility that one or two of these, uh, of these concertina pieces may well not be in the groove that it's supposed to be in. 
Whereas if it's embedded into a, a, a fluid bed of, of, a, of a kind of liquid polymer, it's, you, you're guaranteed it's going to seal all the way around. But of course that um, immediate impression was blown apart the moment I saw the O-rings were rucked up. Um, and, and, and of course, all, all the more so once I realised there was relative movement. So I'm going to cut the camera for a moment. I'm going to cut the filter all the way around with a, with a, with a blade and then slide the top off uh, and also have a look at the O-rings and we'll see what uh, we make of that. Okay, um, I used my dental probe to remove the uh, O-ring and it had taken on a bit of a set where it was round when it had a straight piece across the top where, where it was bridging here. Um, but anyway, I'll put it back and force it into position and it does fit. It's hard to believe they'd use a, a, a wrong um, sized O-ring. That said, I'm not totally sure that in the position it was in, if you'd have slid this filter onto the spigot in the bottom of the housing, it might have uh, dislocated the O-ring, to be honest with you. But uh, anyway, that's something, a point of inspection. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, cut into this and we'll see. I'm not bothered about damaging the tube or anything because we know the tube is plenty strong enough. Um, this is going to be interesting. There we go. You see what I mean? It just literally fell, it literally came straight off. Um, so the bottom of this filter is not even bonded to the tube. Um, and there's no keys on it whatsoever. Again, I'll try and show this on the camera, but if I bring it up reasonably close, um, put the light on maybe. Does that should make any difference? Probably not. Um, but again, uh, no keys on this, and there's no sign of any adhesive. So this is um, an absolute failure just waiting to happen. What a disaster. Um, anyway, let's cut the um, let's cut the base off the filter and just, just see and also maybe cut the top off and just see how the two parts differ. Um, so anyway the conclusion of this a few quid down the drain wasn't it but um, it might have saved someone a whole load of anxiety Yeah, you see, they've missed a trick here because if you look at the inner edge of the um, base, and again, uh, hopefully it will pick it up on the camera, um, there's um, effectively a, a cog available to them because there are raised and lowered sections all the way around this inside edge where all they need to do is castellate the end of this and it would lock in. Uh, but they haven't. The end just literally butts up against that face and it's loose right from the get-go. So, uh, interesting that the top doesn't move though, so let's have the top off and see why the top doesn't move. one filter that's never going to meet its intended purpose. Oh, well that's interesting, it did, fell, it did fall straight off, so how come when I was twisting it originally the top didn't appear to move? Um, right, well it doesn't locate into anything. Again, let me show you on camera if I can. Um, Get that right and can you see the tube just rotating in the top there and again there's no no keys on here and it's there's no sign of it having been having you having adhesive having been used and what a what a trick they've missed because the end piece is castellated the castellations are holding the o-ring in place of course but what a trick if they'd made the end of this castellated they would have locked together so it looks like it's one nil to the oem filter I can honestly say, if you use a Marler filter, you are absolutely causing disaster. Don't touch them with a barge pole, would be my advice. 
now, another member of the BMW BabyNet forum uh, did take a look at a man filter. Now, it appears the man filter, and man are again another very well known make. Uh, the man filters are made in Tunisia and um, also in Germany. Uh, now there won't be more, well you've got to imagine there won't be more than one factory making oil filters in um, B58 oil filters, come to that, in Tunisia. And so it would appear that the factory that is making filters for UFI, which is the OEM filter, are also making them for man. Um, and the, the, filter, the man filter and the UFI original equipment filter for, for the BMW are absolutely identical. So again, don't buy a man thinking you're somehow escaping this um, problem, uh, but the same advice applies. I think from what I've seen on the Marlow, which really is a catastrophe, I think I will be sticking to the OEM filter, despite my original advice, and just checking it very carefully by trying to rotate the ends to make sure the keys are locked. Uh, before I install it and of course also trusting to luck because to some extent we've got to remember that the uh, latest part number is the first iteration of a brand new part number and I'm wondering I must admit I am wondering if maybe the earlier generations of the original equipment BMW filters maybe didn't have keys maybe they were designed like this Marla is which is why they were which is why they were failing um, anyway it is what it is so I hope you found that interesting and uh, thank you for watching.